And if you'll turn in your Bibles with me to Colossians chapter 1, I want to share a passage of Scripture that is probably, it's probably the strongest passage in the New Testament of who Jesus Christ is and, 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 uh, and his divine nature. As Paul wrote this letter to uh, the church there of the Colossian believers, uh, he, he began uh, this letter with uh, these words that uh, are here. And, and so I want to read uh, together. Uh, I mean, I'll read it. You follow along. Colossians chapter 1. And I want to begin at verse 30, 13. Excuse me. And uh, just pay attention to the description. Pay, pay attention to the attributes uh, that Paul is in, inspired to write by the Holy Spirit, inspired to write about who Jesus is, all right? Colossians chapter 1, beginning verse 13, says this, For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the, church, of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God, has plea for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile his, to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you uh, for the power your word uh, brings into our lives. We thank you for the truth and the wisdom your word gives to us. Lord, I pray today, Lord, we would understand the magnitude of your grace, the supremacy of your grace. And Lord, that we would know that without your grace, without your grace, there is no hope. Without your son, Jesus, there is no hope. Lord, thank you again for giving us hope, for giving us your son, for giving us your grace. We pray this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, as I said, this is a very strong passage. This is a very strong passage that, uh, that highlights uh, who Jesus is, what Jesus has done. And I, I want to, yeah, I started a few weeks ago with just one message that talked about the extent of God's grace. And since then, I've just been kind of uh, continuing to pursue uh, in God's word personally, you know, his grace. And uh, uh, not just the extent, but the magnitude of it. And, and, and so this message kind of came forth, and uh, I've entitled it The Supremacy of God's Grace. Now, I, I know for some of you out there that like, uh, you know, uh, adventure movies and uh, 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 drama and stuff like that, there was a, a, a trilogy uh, of movies out there called uh, uh, Born Identity. All right, remember Jason Bourne, the uh, uh, spy, uh, you know, uh, uh, he wasn't sure who he was. He lost his identity, and then uh, the movies went on. There was the Born Supremacy, and, and I think there's another one coming out. I'm not sure, you know, uh, what's going on. But, you know, it, 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 it spoke of one man, and, and uh, uh, you know, he was like indestructible you know, and, and just, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the plot of, of, uh, of his life and finding his identity and, 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 and who he was. Well, we, as we see here in this passage, we see where supremacy really lies. Supremacy lies with Jesus Christ. Uh, and he's not just a man, but he's the Son of God. And this passage highlights who he is. And we need to understand, Paul, as he wrote this letter to the Colossians, he, he, he was addressing some misconceptions that the believers and, and the people were having about 
who Jesus was who, and who Jesus is. And, and so he was, uh, he, he was letting them, them know, you know, uh, again, that Jesus was uh, the, the Son of God. Jesus is the Son of God. And, and that he was not just a man. He was not just a, a, an individual. And we see in this passage uh, the description and the, uh, the, the, the details uh, that are given. And, and, uh, and we need to understand, today that's still kind of the, uh, the case that there's, there's a misconception. Pe- people uh, don't completely understand who Jesus Christ is. Even sometimes uh, in the church, uh, you know, people are asked, well, who is this Jesus? And, and, and they, uh, they, they fall short many times in their, descript- their description of who Jesus is. Uh, you know, and to understand that he is supremely God. He, Jesus, uh, has, he has a divine nature. He came, he left his throne. He, he, uh, he left that, uh, that place of exaltation. He came, he became man. Uh, to fulfill the plan that God has for us. And so as we look at this today, I want you to, uh, uh, to see God's grace, but see Jesus Christ in his fullness and, 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 and who, uh, who he is. Now, I want to add another passage that is very similar to this passage in Colossians. If you'll turn with me further back in the Bible and back in the New Testament to uh, the book of Hebrews, Hebrews uh, chapter 1. And again, now, uh, we're not completely sure who the author of Hebrews is. I for personally feel it's, it's the Apostle Paul. But in this, in this letter, where the other letters, the other epistles, the other books in the New Testament that we have, uh, Paul, you know, acknowledges, you know, he, he, he's writing this uh, to the believers. And, and Hebrews, is un, it's unnamed. But when you look at these passages together, they're so similar. They, to me, again, it's uh, just further proof that, that Paul uh, was the one inspired to write the book of Hebrews. Now, it's not important, you know, who wrote what. We know God's word is God's word and that he inspired uh, the authors uh, uh, through his Holy Spirit. But listen to the verses in Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. And again, you see, uh, you see the uh, the attributes that are given to Jesus. It goes like this. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the universe. The son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. So again, it it speaks to the supremacy of Jesus Christ. He is the one and only Son of God. And he is the way that God's grace has been given to mankind, to those in the past, to us today, and those yet to come. God's grace is shed upon everyone, upon everyone. That opportunity to know him, that opportunity to experience his forgiveness of sin, the experience of the blessings that God has for us. Well, I want you to see, and, and you can follow in the notes there just uh, real quickly, uh, what, what I mean by the supremacy of God's grace. I want you to see the supremacy of God's grace and that's found in Jesus. All right? Again, we want to we answer those questions and make those declarations of who Jesus is and what Jesus has done. So kind of just, uh, you know, narrowing the target, to see who Jesus is and what Jesus has done. So first of all, I want you to see the supremacy of God's grace found in what I've called the preeminence of Christ as God's Son. The preeminence of Christ as God's Son. I see in the King James Version, when when you read verse 18 there, and it says, And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. 
in the King James, it uses the word preeminence. Preeminence. And again, it, it, it speaks of being the one and only. The one and only. I like the way in, in Hebrews it says that it says that he, the sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation. It means he is God. The exact representation. You know, the, the, the passages spoke of uh, that he is the image of the invisible God. This is Jesus. This is Jesus. That he uh, uh, was the creator. He was before all things. And all things were created by him and for him. And this is who Jesus is. And, and so uh, we, we, we need to understand uh, that Jesus is supreme. Jesus is supreme. And God's grace, the, 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 the supremacy of God's grace comes through Jesus Christ. And then secondly, we see the supremacy of God's grace found in what I called the purification of Christ for our sin. We need to understand, we cannot do anything to save ourselves except to accept Jesus Christ. We can't, there's no work we can do. There, there's no price we can pay. God demanded a price for our sins. And he, he provided, uh, he provided the, the symbolism, he provided an illustration of how salvation and forgiveness can be, uh, become a reality in our lives through the Old Testament sacrifices. And in particular, there was uh, the Passover lamb. And, and the Passover lamb uh, was to be uh, a pure lamb without, without defect, with, uh, without uh, 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 any blemish. And, and I often wondered, I mean, sometimes, again, I, I, maybe I analyze things too much, but I often wonder, you know, when the, when the people, when they had to, uh, you know, find that Passover lamb, you know, how, how did they find something without defect, without blemish? You know, because everything, everything in this world has, ha, has a, a defect, ha, has a blemish. But, uh, you know, again, uh, for, the, the, uh, for what God gave them at that time, so that they could make a sacrifice for the sins of the people and, and to, uh, to experience God's forgiveness. And, and again, but it was, it, was, it was limited. But we see... The supremacy of God's grace found in his son, Jesus Christ, in that Christ was pure, without defect, without blemish, without sin, without sin. There's, no one, there's been no one else like that. No one else like that before, no one like that since. Jesus, he is the supremacy of God's grace. He was that sacrifice. And so uh, we, see, we see it in his preeminence. We see it in the purif purification that Christ was that Passover lamb, was that sacrifice for our sin, for our sin. And, and, and so that it says, in whom uh, we have forgiveness of sins. And so uh, it's again, the supremacy of God's grace. God provides it. We can't provide it. We can't uh, we, we can't go out and, and, and find it on our own. We can't uh, earn it. We can't, uh, but through Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, we can. And so now we see, we've seen the supremacy of God's grace. Now we see the fullness of God's grace in the work of Christ. When, when uh, uh, as, as Paul was writing these words to the Col Colossians, when writing these words to uh, the Hebrews, that, uh, that uh, we see the fullness of, of God's grace in what Jesus did, in the work that he accomplished. First of all, his great work of representation. You say, well, what do you mean representation? Well, it's twofold here. We see that he was the exact repre representation of God's glory and God's being. So uh, we, Christ was a represent, became the representative of God. Uh, became God for us. He was God. He is God. And, and, and so uh, he, he, he's in that representation. But more importantly, God, through Jesus Christ, 
became man. And so he becomes our representation. Our representation. He became man and died on the cross so that we did not have to die for our sins. Can, because of, of mankind's sin, because of the, uh, the, the sin of, of human nature, death is the result. That's, I mean, there, 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 was just, there was no hope for life. Uh, we, we, you know, a man was going to be born, man was going to live, and man was going to die. But Jesus became man. He was God, and he was man, and he represented, uh, you know, both God represented us. And so by him dying on the cross, he died for us. He represented us. And, and as he rose again, and, and, and conquered death, and, and uh, uh, he represented God. He, he, he showed us, he showed us who God is. And so that's a great work of representation. And then secondly, we see the fullness of God's grace in the work of Christ, his great work of redemption. Redemption. Now again, that's a word that uh, we, we say a lot, and uh, uh, you know, we understand it, you know, uh, of redeeming something. You know, you uh, you know, it's a, it's a price that is paid, that price of redemption. And again, it says in verse 14 there of Colossians chapter 1, it says, uh, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. And that idea that we're redeemed, we are paid for. We can't pay for ourselves. We, uh, we, we, we can't experience that forgiveness of sin uh, you know, just by saying, I'm sorry. But we experience that forgiveness by accepting Jesus. His redemption, the price he paid, and it gets applied to us. And that's that great work of redemption that shows us the supremacy of God's grace, the supremacy of God's mercy for us. And, and, and again, when we, we think about redemption, you know, it's something we should, every day, every day, uh, we, we, we should understand that we're redeemed. And, and, and scripture says, uh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We, every day we need to say, I am blessed. I am blessed. We, we saw that video uh, as about being blessed and, and that we are blessed. And we're blessed as a nation because there have been individuals that have paid that price. But they, 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 they provided a way that we could experience freedom and live in a free country. But they couldn't bless us enough to, to give us eternal life. But through Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, we are redeemed. And it's not just to have a, a, a free life that we live in this physical body, but to have a life to have a, a life that is going to be eternal forever. And that is the great work of redemption. And then lastly, we see here, see the, seeing the fullness of God's grace in the work of Christ, his great work of reconciliation. Reconciliation. You say, well, what, okay, re representation, redemption, reconciliation. What's that mean? Reconciliation is, is, is coming together being joined together, God and man being joined together. You say, well, why, did they have, why do we have to be joined together? Right now, we're separated from God. In our human nature, in our sin, that causes us to be separate from God with a, a, a void uh, that we cannot jump across, a void that we cannot climb across, a void that we can, it, it, it's such a void that we can't even see God. And, and it, it's such a void that, uh, that, that Christ himself went to the cross and he experienced that void when he took on our sin and he cried out, my God, why have you forsaken me? And that Christ was experiencing that void. And that he wasn't reconciled with his father any longer because he took on our sin. And so that great work of reconciliation, we need to understand the cross brought us back together with God. Made it possible that our sin was covered and so God could look upon us and God could receive us 
into his presence. Without Christ, without Christ, it's impossible. But with Christ, there's that great work of reconciliation. I want you to see here verse 17 of Colossians 1. I want you to see that again. Uh, what it says, uh, it says, He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Now you think about that. You read that. What does that mean? That, uh, uh, you know, without Christ, uh, uh, the molecules are just going to, you know, repel against each other? Well, yeah, I guess because uh, he's creator, you could, uh, you, you, you could say that. That Okay, yeah, through, through God, the creator, he, he brought all things together and, and holds things together. But I'd like to go a little bit further with that and to see that work of reconciliation that through Christ, through Christ, in him, all things hold together. In him, we are held close to God through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. And he holds us. He, 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 he holds us close. And he holds us, uh, us together. And we, we can trust him with our life. We can trust him with our life. And so that's that reconciliation of, of being joined together of being held together to, in God's arms and in God's hands. And so as we, uh, as we look at this understanding of, you know, and, and I don't know, tomorrow maybe you'll hear America the Beautiful played somewhere or uh, you'll, you'll hear it on a, a, a show. And, you know, when you hear that, uh, when you hear those words, God shed his grace on thee, let us truly understand the magnitude of God's grace, the supremacy of of God's grace. Without God's grace, we have nothing. We have no hope. But through Christ, God's grace, we're held together.